Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to our first ever Glide Power Hour. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Tom Gray. I'm the community lead here at Glide. Really excited to have you with us. We're super stoked for the turnout. I can see it's it's growing. We're going to push the 100, 100 mark. Uh, thanks so much for joining. Um, I'm really excited for what is the first in a series of Glide Masterclasses, which we're aiming to run uh, at least once a month. Today's agenda, uh, I'm going to shortly be introing our wonderful co-host, wherever you can see him. Um, we will then showcase some great work by a few community members, uh, followed by a show and tell. And uh, we'll also be featuring a special guest today before closing out for and also, oh, look, we hit 100. Yay. Um, if you can, uh, feel free also to put in some how to's. If we have time at the end, uh, we'll do our very best to show you how it's done. So today's session is to give you some inspiration on the kind of things that you can do with Glide. Uh, and Darren and I are going to be sharing some useful tips and tricks on creating clean and beautiful interfaces that your users will love. Um, we're aware that design, of course, is a very broad topic, uh, which has lots of subtopics. So we're going to do our very best to get through as much as we can. We've cherry picked some key areas that we hope will ignite some creative ideas for your client projects. Um, we hope to do many more of these workshops over the coming months, you know, around design and other important topics. Um, so as we go, if you think of anything uh, that would help aid the conversation and various concepts we'll be sharing around design, please also do drop those in the chat and we can pick those up in our Q&A. Delighted to welcome my wonderful co-host today, Mr. Darren Alderman. Hi, Darren. Hey, Tom. Hello, everyone. For those who don't know, Darren is one of our leading uh, certified experts and ambassadors. Um, he has a fantastic portfolio of Glide projects and customer success stories. Um, everything from creating games like Wordle uh, through to, to large enterprise systems. Uh, so we're very excited to have him. Darren's a fantastic educator with an amazing YouTube channel, um, which I definitely recommend you go and subscribe to. Um, but Darren, how are you, sir? How are things in Louisiana? They are great, man. Yeah, I've just really been enjoying post-COVID life. And yeah, life is good. Awesome, awesome. So Darren, something I wanted to share with the community. I mean, we were talking about this on a, on a call recently, just about the importance of good, good design, good UX, UI. Um, can you share your views on why design and good UX, UI is important for users? I think initially you think of design, you think of like, okay, it looks pretty. Let me pick out some, some nice colors. Well, I got to pick the, the perfect font to make this web page look really nice. And like, yeah, that's a piece of it, but I think that's kind of like the polishing part of design. But really, I think for me, design comes in from the beginning. And you, when you kind of take a step back, like what we're building with, with Glide, the tools we're building, they are solving a problem. So you're trying to solve a problem, trying to perform a task in the most like streamlined way possible, trying to get from point A to point B really efficiently. So when you think about it that way, you start to think about, okay, I need to do something with this app. How many clicks does my, do my users have to do to send this message or order this piece of furniture? I don't know. How many clicks does it take? That's a design question. You know, how can I make this more streamlined? How can I do this faster? Amazon did this perfectly with their one-click pay button. It only takes one click. That's a beautiful design experience. And also you can think about it in the way of you know, finding information. You want to see someone's description or biography. Well, um, if there's a ton of stuff on the, the page, then it's really hard to find that and people get confused. And then it's like, okay, well, what's really the purpose of the app? If it takes me as long to find the information in an app as it did inside of a spreadsheet, well, then it's not really a great design. That's a really, really important point. I thought a good starting place is would be to discuss images and actually beautification of your your interface um just before i hand over to you for a show and tell i just wanted to give a quick uh, community shout out um, on the topic of images uh, this is the template in our template store by eric slesinger forgive me if i'm saying that wrong 
Um, this is an awesome app for, for restaurants and cafes and food trucks and so on. Um, but we thought this was a great example of using images to, to create a really beautiful interface. As an attendee, if you're, if you're new to designing apps with Glide, uh, you'll be reassured to learn that there was zero CSS uh, and coding used to build this app. Everything you see here uh, are images utilizing the image component um, and using the image columns inside an inline list. Uh, another quick one, this is a template by Court McGinty. Again, please forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but we, yeah, there was a big shout out for this one from our Glide design team. Images and the colors here are just fantastic. This is a great example of how good image assets go a long way. Right, that's enough chat from me. Uh, Darren, we would love to learn more about your take on use of images in Glide. Yeah, I think when people start to ask me like how to make something look better inside of Glide, like one of the first things I say is add, add images. Whenever, and I'll show this, this example in a second, one thing I wanted to add was uh, one thing I like to do when I have apps that involve people, like people create profiles and you're looking at other people, like looking at a list of names, it just looks really boring. So um, adding images in there of like their profile headshots makes the app look a, a lot better. Here's a use case. Uh, here's, here's a landing page that I created and it's on, it's a template um, on the Glide website. And, but what I've done is I've taken out all of the images and for me, it looks good. This is like a, a good, good step in the right direction because we do have uh, like different colored backgrounds to create some separation between the sections. You can see we have like a nav bar here. We have kind of like a, a call to action or a hero section here, you know, market your app, uh, get started. They click the button here. You know, we have a three-step process. So it's easy to work with me. But for me, like this just, it looks like kind of like a beginner. How would I like polish this? Well, what I would do is add images. And so here I've added, now we see for this hero section, we have this nice kind of gradient behind the, the text here. And then we have this nice uh, image over here that kind of showcases maybe what we do. So for this website, I'm, I'm creating this kind of market your app concept. And so here we're showing an app and then we're showing like a testimonial of, okay, this is what I do. And so this looks a lot better to me. And then I also found these like really nice uh, shiny shapes and it just kind of makes the section pop a little bit more. And so all I've done here is add a background image and then add some images here. And you know, this image was custom created and, and these images were, were handpicked from other places, but you can actually grab pictures inside of Glide without going to any like external sites. So I wanted to show that to you real quick. So here is the app or the page with um, no images. So if I come to the hero section here, and this is inside of a container. And so over here in the properties, let me zoom in a little bit. We can see I have like background here. So this changes that background. And right down here at the bottom, there's a option to add an image. And here's my custom image, I'll take that out. But if you ever wanna like pull in an image into your app, what you can do is just hit these three dots and come to upload image. And you might think you need to upload an image, but really if you're trying to get something out there quickly, you can just click on stock image here. And then here are a ton of images that you can import into your app. And so here I can say like, just type in app right here, and that's gonna search and pull in um, a ton of different pictures related to apps that I can use. So like if I click on this one and close that out, that adds that there. And then it's kind of hard to read this text. So I'll go ahead and add in a darken feature. So it kind of darkens that. And then now I have this nice little image for the background background there. Yeah, that's all. It's such an effortless way to instantly spruce up an app or, or an interface, isn't it? If you're feeling, oh, this looks a bit dull, just simply that, just finding a great stock image uh, that's relevant to the content. Amazing, amazing. So. There was a great comment in the chat uh, just about the difference between user interfaces and user experiences. Now, they're obviously very closely related, but Darren, I just wanted, I had two questions for you just as we start sort of delving into the whole, this whole conversation a bit deeper. So when you go about, you've built lots of really successful 
projects for a whole spread of, of clients. Um, what are things to new time users? What would you recommend when it comes to designing screens and why? And what are some things that you would encourage individuals stay clear of and why? So in other words, what are common do's and don'ts that you would advise? The first thing I would say is to think about what is the purpose of this, the screen that you're creating? Um, apps are made with you know, different tabs for different purposes. And each one of those tabs will typically have a list on it. And then each one of those list items has like a details use, what we call them in, in Glide apps. What I would encourage you to think about is like, what is the purpose of this page? Is it to show something? Well, then show that. Where things get a little, a little sticky is when you start to show more than what you need to for that specific purpose. So if it's like a profile screen, show the person's, you know, their, their headshot, their name, where they're at, but you don't need to get into like their full story on that one page. Um, like if it's, if you have to scroll all the way down to find something, like then it gets a little too much. Now I'll share, I'll show an example that kind of shows this in a little bit, but like the first thing is like, just think about the purpose of the page and try to limit what is on that page. And that makes it easier for people to find things. And I think that's kind of like the first, first step. Yeah, just before you share screen, there's a great question here in the chat by Justin Matthew. Thank you, Justin. Just asking about what's your design thinking process when you're building in Glide? Do you design directly in Glide or are you using pen, paper or, or wireframing in another application? Yeah, so when I, when I meet with um, clients, a lot of times I will uh, use wireframes to show like the connections between things. So I'll say um, like there's a button on this screen that will lead to this person's properties if we're talking about managing properties. And then if they click on this button, it will like with a sticky note, it will send an email to a user that this property is up for sale. So I, I, sometimes if I'm trying to explain things, I find it helpful to kind of wireframe out all the connections but I don't really go into detail on like what's going to be on those actual screens um, in the wireframe because really Glide does a really good job of it's just so easy just to build things inside of Glide. Yeah. And I guess depending on the project size, I mean, I've certainly in the past had, you know, it would, it would be quicker just to build it in Glide uh, mm. rather than design it all out. But of course there are some projects, you know, certainly in pages, if you're building big systems, it might need a bit more thought. Yeah. And I do find myself, with that, I think when I'm creating an app, a lot of the times I'm, I'm tweaking design as I'm building. And so that's, that's a use case where like it, sometimes it's, it's, it's not faster for me to build it inside of Glide because I get kind of distracted with like, should I make this text bold or extra bold? <laughs> and should it be centered? <laughs> like I'm doing that as I'm building the app. So it's, so I don't really have to think about the design at the end. Like I'm designing as I'm going along because that kind of informs the user experience, the user interactions is like their overall design. So if we're just bring it, bringing it back to some best practices and sort of things to stay clear of, do you have some guiding principles that you could share with the, the community? Uh, I was just thinking, I was talking about bolding um, bolding things is uh, in addition to you can kind of think about when you're designing a screen like starting from top to bottom in order of importance so like if you're talking about like I used the example of properties before so sharing the location of a house and then the address of a house and then the type of house and then maybe the number of people that live at the house so you're creating kind of this hierarchy from top to bottom in order of importance because as a user, when you're going to that screen, that's what you're going to be going through. But in addition to that, if the list gets too long, I like to break it up in, with sections. So you can talk about like with a header, like you'd say location and occupants and type, and then you like list out things below that. So think top to bottom in order of importance, and then use headings to kind of visually break up things. So it's easier to scan through the information. Another thing that we were speaking with Bob Petito about is just about spacing and padding and ensuring that screens on the whole are not too cluttered. Do you have any sort of thoughts and advice around that? You know, when do you sort of limit yourself on individual screens? Can you speak to that? If I can share real quick, I did want to shout out um, 
so Glide just added in, or not just added, but a few months back with um, Pages containers now have uh, padding built in. So you can quickly add in spacing. So I think that's a really nice feature. And when you get in here, if there's no spacing, things can get a little cluttered. Like if I take out before I was using these separators to add some, add some padding in there. So if we look at this, there's supposed to be sections. Like this is a chunk of information. This is a chunk of information. And when I can see all three sections at the same time, it's just like, ah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. but if we add in um, some padding, some, some white space, um, then it starts to break up everything. And then you can really focus in on, okay, this is, this is where my eye first goes. And then I can scroll down if I want to dive deeper and I can go there. And then I have this here. So yeah, I, I use white space or spacing to padding to um, break up sections and just not feel, make, make the screen feel claustrophobic with all the information I'm, I'm trying to view at once. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. You want to make sure that all data in your interface is easily digestible. And I think sometimes if you, it's always been my experience, you know, if, if, the, if the screen is too cluttered, it's much too much for, for your brain to try and retain all in one go. So being able to break it out really does aid making it more enjoyable and more accessible for, for users. Um, I wanted to talk about all things buttons. I love buttons. Um, there's lots of great different use cases for, for buttons. What is your approach with utilizing this feature in Glide to try and improve user experience? I think buttons are, are silly. You know, I'm from the, the East, East Coast in the US. And so I've heard some people on the West Coast pronounce them but buttons with like a D <laughs> buttons. And so I just think that's, that's humorous. But accents aside, like buttons are essential. Like you're clicking on things inside of the app. Like if you want your app to do something, like you have to click on something. That's how you trigger the, the event. And so, I mean, uh, they're really important. Um, my approach is uh, to use different types of buttons. So I'd love to share another example with you guys. All right, so I've spun up a little project here. So here, all this is nonsense. Don't worry about the stuff at the top. But what I want you to see is uh, on this screen, we may have like five different things we're trying to do. And right here, it's just visually, it's kind of hard to know where to click because there's no distinction between the different events or the different buttons. So what I like to do is think about, you know, what's the most important thing? Where are buttons typically inside of other apps? Because that's where people will naturally kind of look for them. And so let's kind of redesign this using different features we have inside of Glide to kind of change this up. So the first thing is this save button. So typically when you're saving things, you typically think about like a heart or a like button. So Glide has a favorite uh, button type. So if I click that, move that up to the top here, and actually I put that right below the image. So now we have a favorite and this right here gets rid of the need for this button here. And so now they have uh, a save feature up there. When we think about sharing, that's typically like an arrow pointing, pointing off and it's typically at like the top or bottom corner of the screen. So let's take this one and make it a floating button and then we can give it a share icon. And then I'm actually gonna add, I like to add a little separator at the bottom because um, right now this button is hovering over other stuff. So I'm actually gonna add that in there just to add some space. So that with, if they scroll to the bottom, they can see the button. That's one thing I like to do. And then for add and delete, those are kind of like two, opposing things. And so you're either gonna do kind of one or the other. So for that, I like to think about using uh, the button bar, which allows us to do two buttons right next to each other. And so we can think about add on the right and delete on the left. And then we can also add some color distinction between these. So it's, it's really easy to find what you're looking for. So we can do danger red for delete. And then for uh, adding, we can think about that as like, you're adding it, it's a good thing. So let's do a success there. And that gets rid of these two buttons. And then you have the buy button, which is, 
if this is like a commerce app, e-commerce app, that's like the main thing you want people to do. And so we can leave that one kind of like as the big and the big one that you want people to do. Um, so I'm gonna leave that one alone. But now I hope you can see that we have kind of visual distinctions between the different actions and we still have, they're all buttons. They all do the same thing, but we've used design to kind of make it a, a better experience for users. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So a really popular topic that we saw in the community is different ways that you can help personalize the experience for users. And one way to do this is to use a template column. Darren, can you, can you share how you sort of go about personalizing an interface? Yeah, we can dive into that for sure. So here's an example of a, a project that I created. This was actually the first template I created inside of Pages was a, a client portal. And this right here is like the, the landing screen inside uh, of this page. And so everybody who comes into this page is going to see this. And for me, it's just kind of like, I don't know, boring. <laughs> Because it's just, it's kind of like two spreadsheets on top of each other, right? You just have a table here and a table here. So I thought about, you know, how can we make this stand out a little bit better? How can we make it more welcoming? So what I did was add a section up above here that just says, hello, maybe try to brighten somebody's day uh, because, you know, they're coming back to work, give them a good old good morning. So we can add in this like, hey, and then their name. And this is really easy to do. If we come over to the data editor, uh, you have like the user profile that you're logging in with. Um, so whoever logs in, like we know their name, um, here's their email. And so all we need to do to add in that, hey, is create right here, which, what, what is called a template column. And um, I'll just recreate this real quick. Uh, you can do add column to right, to add it right next to the name. And we'll just say, hello, message. And the column type is template. And then here you put in like whatever message you want to say. So I might say, hey, do a little emoji, comma, and then their name. And then right here, name, like those are repeated for every one of the names. And so all we need to do is replace something in our template. So a template is something that can be reused. And we want to replace a part of that with the user's name. So I'll just put name there. And now we have this nice little message that we can use inside of our page. So if we go back to title, I can change welcome message to hello message. And now nice. it says, says this. For a bonus tip for all of my fancy gliders out there, one thing I've done before is saying like, good morning, good afternoon, good night. So you can grab the time of like the time the user's in the app and then do some calculations to determine if it's their morning, their afternoon, uh, their night, and then add in like, good morning, good afternoon, good night with an if then else column. That's a challenge for you. Awesome. Darren, just on the topic of pages. So uh, I was having a conversation with, with other Darren who's uh, one of Glide's team about pages. And he was saying, you know, I'm, I'm about 90% all about pages. Yeah, it's a fantastic product and we're seeing some really, really fun, amazing use cases using that tool. So there was a, a question in the chat just around, uh, you know, what, what is the main difference between Glide pages and Glide apps? Yeah, I've heard that a number of times now. Uh, people are like, we've had apps for a couple of years now, pages are coming. Is pages the new apps? Should we stop using apps? The answer is no. <laughs> Uh, what you want to, this, this, and this is really a design question, so it fits in perfectly. Uh, what you want to think about is what's the primary use of the application? I'll use the long, uh, the long term. What's the primary use of the application? Is it for uh, you to use at your computer every day? And you're always going to be at your computer. If that's the case, then Pages is probably a better product for you because you're building something for desktop. And the key difference there is like desktops, desktops have more screen real estate. So you can like put more stuff on the screen. Whereas if we're thinking about apps, examples of thinking using apps first is maybe you're a real estate person and you're out 
at properties all the time. Like you're never at your computer. In that case, an app makes more sense. But maybe you're at your work, you may not be out and about, but your work is mobile. So think about like a uh, somebody working in a warehouse or a, kind of like a manufacturing plant. Like they're out, they're moving around, they're talking to other people, they're moving boxes. They're not pulling out a laptop to update things. They're pulling out their phone or their iPad. And so that's more of a mobile first experience. And so you wanna think about, you know, what's the primary use of this application if it's going to be on the computer, use pages because it's desktop first. If it's going to be more mobile, well, then use apps because it's more phone or iPad first. And But the one thing to add on to that is that does not limit you because in both cases, both pages and apps work in both settings. So like apps also work on desktop and pages also work on mobile. So up here in the top, you can actually flip over for apps. You can flip over to the tablet view. And this would show you kind of what the experience would look like in the desktop view. And then inside of pages, you can, in the same way, click this drop down and switch over to the phone. And that's going to responsively shrink everything down. And then you can see what this would look like in a more mobile experience. Um, I very unfairly referred to other Darren as other Darren. Uh, oh, and of course, his name. I'm thrilled that he's here on the call. Uh, Darren Humphreys is one of our treasured members of our Glide team. So sorry about that, Darren. So just on the topic of pages, there was a uh, something awesome that you showed me earlier, just around how to sort of break out the interface and just an idea about how you might segment this mm -hmm. data. This was a page that I was working on. And so this is kind of my information here. And so for me, um, I felt like, cause you have like these long text blocks going like kind of back and like, there's just a lot of reading on this page and you're having to like scroll down and, and all that good stuff. So I wanted to find a way to kind of like just break it up a little bit. And I was trying to figure out a way to do this inside of pages. So the method I came up with um, is adding in, if I can find it here, this uh, choice this little button, these little buttons here. And so my idea was when I click on, kind of thinking these are as like tabs, creating tabs inside of pages. So I can click on the about tab to view this section. I can click on the experience tab to view experience and, and so on and so forth. And so now if I delete these two, just to get it back to what it was. Now, if I click on about, it shows this section. If I click on experience, it shows this section. If I click on contribution, it shows this section. So it keeps you from having like scroll up and down as much. And it also shows like the progression of information that you might want to see. That's a great, great use of the choice component. Um, very excited to introduce. Uh, now is that time for our special guest. Welcome, Alan. Edmund, great to have you. Hey, Alan. Hi, guys. I, I see we all went for the same, same yeah. background. <laughs> too much. I need to match. It's the so best one. The yeah, excellent. Yeah, huge welcome, Alan. For those who don't know Alan, Alan is one of our certified experts. I think you joined it, was it the beginning of this year? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So how's it all been going? Because you've been doing some really fantastic, interesting projects for clients. How's that all been going? It's so great, man, because so basically I discovered, so sorry about my voice. I'm trying to fight off COVID, and so my voice is a bit odd. Um, I discovered Glide during the pandemic, actually. And so it's, it's so great of a tool to like visualize data that I started doing apps for everything in, in my life and my friend's life and my wife's life and everyone's life, and then starting to work with other people. Um, so I've done, I've done, I mean, many, many different types of apps for fitness, for real estate, for, and more recently is a lot, a lot of MVPs. So people who want to build mobile apps, but may, maybe they don't have the budget to build a native app first. So I always tell them, you know what, we can build a MVP that has most of the features you would guys would need. And at least you have something you can get in, in, in your users' hands and, and start getting feedback before you can invest in that in a huge um, native app. I've used, I, I try to use it for everything. Every time I have like something that looks like a spreadsheet, I'm like, hmm, can I make a Glide app? <laughs> yeah, excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Alan, we'd be really delighted if you'd share with us a project that you've been working on. I mean, we've, we've covered some of many, many topics around uh, design, but um, would you be happy to show something that sort of pulls the element, some of the elements that we've been discussing? Sure, yeah. So my wife is a personal trainer. She was my first client and definitely the most challenging one, obviously. Um, so she is doing programs for, for, uh, for online coaching. So I built the app for her so that she can provide the, the, the her customers the programs or the meal plan and the workout plans, right? So at the beginning, it was really just giving people the access to their program, so like the workouts and the, the meal plans. And so obviously, the, the type of information you have is very boring, right? It's just like the name and then you don't have much visual, I mean, beautiful stuff that you want to show. So the use of image I've made is I try to put a banner on every page so that it looks a bit less boring. So I try to put, a bit, put more colors to make it a bit more vibrant, etc. So especially like, for example, the different type of meals, I put a different image. So it's just to make it a bit more vibrant. And so again, uh, to come back to Darren's point, the use of templates, as you can see here, I'm, I'm using a template to showcase a number of food items for each meal. Similarly to the number of exercises for one particular workout. And so then again, for one work, for one exercise, the number of sets and the number of repetition or whatever is like one big template instead of having so many information because it's different fields, right? So the, the idea is to use templates to kind of aggregate data and show what's essential to the user with again, the use of banners to add a bit more color because otherwise it's very boring to just have black and white screen. Another thing I wanted to share is the use of buttons. Actually, I'm using the same um, uh, principle as Darren mentioned earlier. Let me just find the right user. Yeah. So she has three programs. And then, so basically, she wants to allow people to join. And so you have two separate call, action, call to actions here. One is first go to the YouTube channel, and the second one is save the playlist. The main action she wants people to make is to subscribe to the channel. So I'm using the button bar to highlight this one and make this one the, the lighter tone. So it's, it's there, but it's less important. Also, when you <clears throat> first start, you have a bright red button to start the program with, an emo with a rocket emoji. And once you've done it before, I, I put it a light, like the lighter tone again button to say you can redo the program as many times as you want, but then it's not as important as if it's the first time. And again, the the share button, if you want to share this program to your friends, and I have this floating button. So basically, the exact same use cases that Darren was showing, um, I've been using the same, we all use the same, so it's quite interesting. But the thing is, so first the app was completely close to customers, and then she wanted to have something for like prospects or whoever to be able to see what she has to offer. So we started to work on, on this page, which is the home page, and then showing the different programs and some tips so we can open the app to the public. And then Pages was released. And I saw some experts showcasing landing pages. And so, so I was like, hmm, can I make a glide page for my landing page? And I ended up doing uh, a landing page for her using glide pages. Um, yeah, so again, trying to use, uh, it's not as vibrant as, as yours, Darren. I don't have uh, like good image Photoshop skills. Um, so I, I only use Canva for, to try to pick up some, um, some items and some elements. But basically, again, instead of showing just text, trying to use a few icons and stuff around, try to put a bit more color with photos, uh, always contrasting the different sections um, of, of the content. And similarly to, to what Darren mentioned again earlier, um, in, instead of showing the entire list of all the programs he has to offer, I'm using also the choice component to toggle between premium and one-off programs so that people can only focus on what they are interested in. So it uses less space on the screen and, and it's also kind of beautiful and satisfying to click on it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's basically what I've been doing. And to go back to why images is so much better than just using uh, like icons even or, or just raw page, I have this page that I've been working on and I've, I was looking for icons and then I think this very sad and maybe it's, the, maybe it's the icons, I don't know, maybe the illustrations are a little bit sad, but I found this is very not 
interesting, but once you add images to it, it suddenly becomes much more interesting. Uh, yeah. So yeah. yeah, like the use of images and and yeah, that's basically it. And so the last thing is for pages, very important part is so, so I'm gonna switch back to the the page. With pages, you really need to leverage the containers. So every single section is a container. And uh, so you can see here the hero, the mission, the, the biography part, every single section is a container. So you have more flexibility on the padding that was mentioned earlier, on the width as well. And I also throw in separators every, every step of the way to give the, the text a bit more space so it's a bit more readable. Because nowadays, you people prefer to have a bit bigger text and more more space so you, it's easier to read and to and to scroll through so yeah containers and separators that's the key on pages yeah yeah it looks so clean congrats beautiful i love that your images um match the color in the fitness app they match the color theme of the whole app that just really ties everything together it looks so great man yeah. good job thanks thanks we appreciate that uh, design, of course, is a really, really broad, as I mentioned, very broad topic. Uh, of course, we haven't had time to go over absolutely everything, but we'd love to keep the conversation going. We'd love you to create posts, you know, do things like create posts in the community forum. It's always great to learn your insights uh, and, you know, ways we can break, break open the conversation, uh, you know, around these topics. So if you have any questions uh, on how to do things, please also do drop your queries in the in, in the forum and, and we'd love to to help support with it it'd certainly be of huge value to other community members uh, as well and they'd, they'd love your input insights and, and expertise i am going to before giving darren the final word uh, of the session thank you so much everybody for joining it's been a really fun session it just whizzed like that before we jump off this is the very first workshop and we'd love your feedback on topics that you'd like us to cover in future sessions. Uh, Darren, what's the final word? Here it is, folks. Delightful design is divine. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Alan, for being our special guest. Thanks um, for having me. Really great to see everybody. Look forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.